Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Dr. Nestor Suinima, and this session is called Abusing Azure Active Directory. Who would you like to be today? And let's start by thanking our sponsors who made this event possible. So, Scriptrunner, DQ Global, Proximo 3, Redspire, Agilisys, and Hitachi Solutions. Yes, so my name is Dr. Nestor Junima. I'm MVP, uh, Identity Access, which is part of the Enterprise Mobility Group, Technology Group, and um, I'm a creator of AAD Internals Toolkit, which I'm also using during this session. And you can follow me on Twitter. I'm tweeting with handle Dr. Azure AD. So, what are we going to do today? Uh, first, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to this uh, and some background information about things we are going to do today uh, and why we are doing those things today and why it's possible. And then I'm going to show, show you three different things or techniques how you can penetrate cloud environment uh, via on-prem environment. So the first is password authentication, the second one seamless single sign-on or SSSO and third one is identity federation. And there are some interactive parts here, so I would like you to participate to this, uh, to some of the demos also. Okay, and then there's some references and credits for other guys who, who have done great job. A couple of my, a couple of things I'm using today is based on, on work of these guys. And also the last link there is for a a great article about how you can actually detect if someone is using my AAD internals toolkit within your organization. So read that. Okay. So what is this AAD internals? Well, it's a puzzle module and it's an admin and hacking toolkit for Azure AD and Microsoft 365. It's an open source, so you can download it from GitHub, but it, but it, it's much easier to Install from Powerful Gallery with install dash module, AAD internals, and you are good to go. Okay, so let's start with some introduction and back, background information. So quite often people ask me, have asked for years, that is cloud safe? And I've always said, yes, that is safe. It is very well protected. Uh, you, you really can physically enter the data center for instance and everything is configured very in very safe way so cloud as such is safe only way you can get in to someone's cloud is that you need to have credentials and how to get credentials well if you're an attacker you need to steal them somewhere somehow and there are at least a couple of ways to do this first is phishing so you just put up some website and ask people to give their credentials and and that's one way. And another way is using things like password spray attacks, where you try to use uh, most common passwords, just couple, not all, but just couple, couple of passwords which are uh, well, well, which are used in, 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 in at large. But how safe the cloud actually is? Now that's a fair question. So typically, in organizations which are a little bit larger than one or two person is that uh, your on-prem environment is connected to cloud. So you might, for instance, want to synchronize your users from your on-prem AD to Azure AD so, so that you don't have to manage two sets of users. Also, you might want to use the same password in, in cloud you, that you are using on-prem or you might even want to have single sign-on. And all these things that are making it easier for users to use cloud, at the same time when you are doing that, you are actually also poking holes to that safe cloud environment. And, and I could say that your own, own on-prem environment is not as well protected as cloud is. So nowadays it's much easier for attackers to attack your on-prem environment and get access to cloud that way. So, I could say that cloud is as safe as is your on-prem environment. 
So always remember that you need to protect your on-prem environment. And today I'm going to show you why, why it's so important. Okay, so before moving on, a couple of words about Azure AD Connect. So what is Azure AD Connect? To simplify things, it is the tool that is synchronizing user objects, groups, contacts, devices from your on-prem environment to Azure AD. So that's it what it does. Of course, there's some in some cases you can have some kind of write back, but that's mainly what it does. So it synchronizes things from on-prem to cloud. But it is also used to configure authentication settings of your tenant. So that's good to remember. Okay, so why this whole on-prem thing is so important nowadays? Well, uh, at the end of the 2020, we heard that about thing called Solaricate or Sunburst. And what is it? Well, it's a backdoor which was added to SolarWinds Orion software, which is a network monitoring software by a supply chain attack. So that way the backdoor was spread it to 18,000 customers at least. And that allowed attackers to gain access to uh, SolarWinds customers' on-prem environment. And via on-prem environment, they were able to get access to uh, customers' cloud also. And I'm going to show you some of those techniques today in this presentation. Okay, and about my demo setup today, I have three different uh, Microsoft 365 tenants and three different on-prem environments. So one for PTA, one for single sign-on, and one for ADFS. So, let's start with password authentication. And what is the purpose of password authentication? Well, to put it simple, the purpose is to enable users to use same passwords in cloud than they use in on-prem environment. And that's it. That's what basically it does. And this functionality is implemented to uh, authentication agent, which is a component that is installed in some on-prem uh, server with its domain joint. And the authentication agent connects to Azure AD. There's a, a service bus where's the queue of authentication requests. And that's the way the agent communicates with Azure AD. So it connects to cloud and, uh, and forms a persistent connection, HTTPS connection, and in technically in background there's a bus and, and the information goes back and forth. And uh, yeah, let's move forward. forward. So uh, what happens when we use Azure AD Connect to configure this password authentication? Well, first, of course, it installs the agent and it also registers that authentication agent to Azure AD and then it starts the service. So that's pretty much what it does. But how the actual authentication takes part? Well, here's the answer for, the answer for that. So, uh, when user goes to the uh, Azure AD, tries to log in, enters username and password, then the Azure AD recognizes that, hey, this organization is using password authentication. So instead of authenticating uh, the credential by itself against Azure AD, it sends those uh, credentials in an encrypted authentication request to the queue. And then the authentication agent, one of those, there can be multiple of them, or many of them, one of the agents will fetch that authentication request, it decrypts that using the, the uh, private key of, of that particular agent, and then sends those or passes those credit cells to Win32 API called Login User W. And so basically, it, it tries to log in uh, using those credentials. And then that function returns either true or false. So if that was successful, true, and if false, it wasn't. And it also tells the reason for that. So maybe password was not correct, or maybe maybe the login hours 
restrictions said that you can't log in at this this hour. So, what do we need to exploit this? Well, basically, you need to implement your own version of logon user w, uh, add it to DLL, and inject that DLL to the running authentication agent process, and that's it. And the implementation I'm using here, it first of all it it accepts all passwords, and the second, it uh, puts all those passwords in a log file so that I can see which which username used which password. So I can harvest users' credentials, and I, I can use well because people typically use same or similar password in different uh, services. I could use those credentials to log in as a user outside your own, own organization also. So, it's demo time then. So let me just switch to my demo environment and we go to PTA section. And uh, uh, this is a computer we are running we are running a, uh, a PTA configuration. So this is a domain connected to Azure AD, and we are using PTA authentication. So let me just check that this is a correct. Yeah, this is a correct browser session. So I'm just going to show you what happens when I try to log in. So I go to portal.office.com. Uh, okay, the Megan was already rock locked in, so I'll just sign out. And then I'm going to sign in again. Click sign in. And now it asks for a password. I just enter something that, that's not correct. So this is something like, as you can see, there are some uh, Finnish characters also. So I'll click sign in. And it says, no. Wrong password, but I can enter the correct password and then I'm logged in. Yes, so I'll just sign out again. And now I'm gonna install that um, our own implement uh, our own implementation of that logon user w function. And this is uh, part of the AAD inter internals. Uh, and I'm already imported the module here like this, import module, AAD internals, like this. And now I'm going to install the uh, my own implementation, which is called PTS PI. So I'm going to say, say install AAD int PTS PI. And hit enter, it, it asks that, are you sure about this? Yes, I am. And that's it. So let's see. I have a process hacker here, so, so that I can show you that Here's the a process called Azure AD Connect Authentication Agent Service, is to remember. And when I open that one with, with Process Hacker and go to P like PTA Spy, I can find it here. And as we can see, it says that PTA Spy hook for logon user W accepts all passwords and collects credentials to log file. So, let's try this. So, now I'm here, I'm going to go... Well, first, there's a method here which allows us to... AAD in PTA spy log, which allows us to dump those passwords, what we have collected. And if I provide switch decoded passwords, it shows them as plain text. And here's a small script that basically in every five seconds it dumps that log. So I'm just gonna run this and it starts dumping those passwords on every every five seconds or so. And now I, I, I will go here and try to sign in again. I'm gonna say just open this. Hello, got this summit. 
Greetings from Finland. And now when I hit enter, you can see that Megan was able to log in and now we can see the password also here. And this is also what I want you to do now. So try to log in to Ovitz. Uh, Ovitz.com with this username and use any password and then please send your greetings to other other attendees so we, we can see uh, where from where around the world you are actually attending this 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 uh, conference okay thank you so that was that demo so how how we can actually detect this tool well the the easiest part is to see that whether there's a uh, hidden directory in the root of C drive called PTSPy. So if, if it if it is there, then you uh, can be pretty sure that someone has installed this this tool to your server. And another one is that you can turn on PowerShell module logging, and you can turn it for for everything with the star, or or then you can um, add the AD internal so that you will only monitor that one. And after that, it's enabled. There's a uh, event ID four one o one, and as you can see in in this this log here, operational log, that you can see that the package AAD internals was installed. So that's one way to de detect use usage of AAD internals in your own organization if you if you want to do that. So just turn on audio locking for AAD internals, and and you are good to go. Okay, then to second second one, which is seamless single sign-on. And what is the purpose of single, single sign-on? Well, to provide single sign-on to computers which are domain joined and they are in corporate network. So when they are there, you can actually automatically sign in. Well, automatically in a way that you don't have to type your password. And if you are using login hint or domain hint, uh, URL parameter you don't need to even even set, uh, give your your username so you can also skip that one so some concept related to to Kerberos so this uh, uh, seamless single sign-on is is using Kerberos to implement this and a couple of things uh, uh, for background information so so there's a key distribution center or, or KDC for short, which is actually a domain controller. So that provides tickets, Kerberos tickets. And there are two types of tickets. There's a ticket granting ticket, which you use kind of to to authenticate. And then with service tickets, you you will have an access to services. And then we have a service principal name, which represents the service. So it's a kind of name or URL for that service service and um, uh, it, it is also it has a related computer account in in ad so the Kerberos was built for situation where where you as a user want to use some service but you don't trust the service and service doesn't trust you so how to do that and the Kerberos was made for that so you you and uh, the domain controller or ad you have a trust relationship, so as has the service and and uh, as already, uh, sorry, AD. So basically, it goes that way. That first the user kind of authenticates against AD, and it will get a ticket that says that who you are, and it encrypts some of the information using using the server's secret because the uh, Active Directory knows everybody's secrets. And then the user gets this service ticket and goes with that to the server and says, hey, this is me, I want to consume the services you are offering. And the server can then check, validate that, because it knows its own password. And it can validate that, okay, this was actually how it should be. And here's also the same, same authentication flow, which I already explained. So. Uh, I'm not going to go those steps again. 
But what happens when you configure this um, Siemens single sign-on? Well, first, Azure Ready Connect, it enables that. So there's kind of a switch in, in Azure Ready that says that, okay, Siemens single sign-on is now enabled or not. It also creates a computer account, Azure AD, SSO, ACC to the AD. It creates a corresponding service principal name for auto logon service. And it, it configures Azure AD using the computer account name and password. So yes, it sends the Azure AD SSO ACC com, uh, computer account name to the cloud, but also the password. And the whole password, so it's not the MD4 has or anything like that, but the whole password. So how does the authentication flow goes here when when user is using browser, for instance. So, a uh, user tries to access Azure AD, enters credentials, username, uh, or username, not the password, just the username, and then Azure AD recognizes that, hey, this is a user who is using seamless single sign-on. So it redirects browser to autologon service. And autologon says, sees that, okay, this user has not authenticated yet, so it sends a authentication challenge, and the type of the challenge is negotiate, and then the browser understands, okay, now this wants to have a Kerberos ticket. So, it goes to domain controller and says, that, hey, this is me, I want to use this particular service. So, domain controller creates a service ticket, uh, and then, then the browser goes back to autologon service, they said, okay, here's my Kerberos ticket. An autologon service can validate that. And after validation is okay, it redirects, uh, or sorry, it gives you a code, authentication code, or authorization code, and says that, okay, now you can go back to Azure AD with this. And then the user goes to Azure AD, and with that code, it, it can, uh, the user can log in. And there's a link there, sorry, there, for, for the actual process. So what is inside that Kerberos ticket then? So I'll just open up here all the parts. And on the green, you can see it, it says, sorry, it says, it says ticket here. So this is the actual ticket. And it is encrypted with um, server secret. So domain controller encrypts this using the server secret and it includes a session key here and then inside that we have a pack which comes from principal account uh, a privilege account certificate and here's the most important information and that is a user seed and this whole pack is uh, well there's a checksum that is calculated based on server secret and finally, there's some other, oh, sorry, some other user information here, but as ready doesn't really care about those. So, how the actual, actual um, authentication is, what are the steps, or what the as ready is interested in when it cuts the ticket? So, it uh, checks that the checksum is valid. So, that's the most important part there. It checks that timestamps are valid so that the ticket is not too old. And it checks that whether there's a matching user, so, sorry, that there's a user with matching seat in that particular tenant. And all the other information like username, server name, user display name, anything like that, as already doesn't really care about those at all. So only thing it, it cares is that the seat exists. Yes. So what do we need to exploit this? Well, obviously, we need the password of the computer account and of course we need target users seat and with those two information we can we can create a Kerberos ticket and log in as that user regardless where you are so you don't have to be inside your corporate network as long as you have those two information so demo time so now we're gonna go to Woodgrow. Oh, sorry, was here. 
and yes so let's start by opening Adduc or Active Directory Users and Computers and here in the computers organizational unit you can see that there is the computer account called Azure AD SSO so that's the computer account there and now we need to get password of that particular account well actually md4 has we can't get the actual password but md4 has hash will do so how can we get that well there are many ways to do that you could do mimic ads you could export that ad and then browse that that offline but i'm using here a puzzle module called ds internals module ds internals because here's an interesting function called called get ad rebel account and this kind of emulates the dc promo protocol so basically uh, this this um, command let says to ad that hey i want to replicate this particular user's information so give it to me and that way you will also get access to that password hash okay but first we need to enter credentials to a variable i'm gonna do that now oh let's do it this way so who am i so now i am uh, logged in uh, to this computer as a domain admin so i need those domain admin Credentials and I have a password manager here in the other window. Let's copy that. And now we have saved the credentials. And the next thing is that we want to, uh, we, need, we need the GUI, the object GUI of uh, the computer account. And here's a command to do that. So I'm just going to run this row here. And now when I say GUID, it shows the GUID it's saved there. And the next part is that I'm gonna I'm gonna run this get ad repl account command against the domain controller or ad which is located in this same server. So I'm just gonna pass that GUID and then I'm gonna pass the credentials and set that the server will, server to use will be the local host. So so I'm going to run that command. Okay. So what it... No, oh, yes. I was... Uh, I, I, I selected this so it tried to run only that word. But now I'm going to run the whole line here. And now the account uh, information is, is set to this variable. And now I want to get the hash file value there. Because it's in byte array. I need to convert it to to a hexadecimal format before that and I'm going to do it like here. Yes. <coughs> so, next we need to uh, get some users seats. So that's the next step. So let's say get ad user uh, filters filter star and pipe and select Use a principal name and seed. And there we have seeds, a lot of seeds. So let's log in as an as Alan. So we need uh, Alan seed from there. And now we are good to go. So now we have the hash of the password and we have user seed. So we have all the information we need at this, this point. So I'm going to save that to variable. So Kerberos ticket equals get ad int, uh, sorry, it's new aad int Kerberos ticket and seed string like that. Let us turn the camera off and hash because we don't know the password, we only know the hash. So I'm just going to have it like here. Yes, so now I'm just going to hit enter. And now 
now we have created the Kerberos ticket and that's also a byte array so I can I can say no blackout yeah yeah I totally totally blackout yeah can can do that I was I was supposed to dump that as a as a hexadecimal but can't remember the command now well <laughs> dementia I think well anyway now I have the ticket I have to use it in in three minutes so let's say I wanna get an access token to this user's email so I'm gonna say get aad int access token for EXO, which is short for XS Online. I'm going to provide the Kerberos ticket KT and tell, I need to tell the domain. It would be this one here. Just going to copy that. And that should do it. Okay, no errors, so everything went well. So now I can say read AAD in access token and provide that, that as a parameter and hit enter and we can see that uh, this user actually is Alan and it has a uh, quite a lot of different rights to users uh, mailbox so now with the access token you can send email as an as that user you can read his email and and so on so that was the second kind of a backdoor which you can use to attack organization cloud environment through on-prem environment. And how you can detect that? that well, that's a quite tricky one. You can do the the uh, module, postal module operations. You can do that, but that's pretty much it. So, so in practice, it's, it's very hard to detect. And once you just have that password hash, after you have get access to that, you don't need anything else. Well, of course, those seats, but you can get those seats also if you are like a normal user in that organization. You can dump everybody's seats if you want to. Uh, so, so only thing you need is that really what you need is that password, pa password hash. Okay. Then the last one, identity variation. And what's the purpose of this identity federation? So it's basically a combination of the previous two. So it provides, uh, well, it enables users to use same credentials in, in on-prem and, and cloud, but, but it also provides single sign-on for, for computers which are domain joint and they are locked into corporate, uh, corporate network. And concepts here, we have service provider, which in this case is Azure AD. We have identity provider or IDP, which is on-prem AD. Uh, on-prem AD with ADFS or, or federation services. And then we have security token, which is pretty much similar than the service ticket is, is in Kerberos. But this is a basically same, basically this is solution to the same problem than, than the Kerberos, but, but, but using this, those those things doesn't have to be in the same domain. Uh, Kerberos basically it requires that all the services and the users and the, and the AD are in the same domain for it to work. Yes, so here again, you have the user has trust relationship with AD and or ADFS, and also the cloud has trust relationship with ADFS. And when the user goes or wants to use the service, it, it goes to domain controller, to the AD, and says that I want to use this service. And, and then the domain controller signs that uh, a security token with, with, his, uh, with its private key and sends that, that to the uh, user. And user can get that token and, and go to go to service provider and the service provider can validate the 
validate the token because it it has it already has the public key of that that domain controller so so it can verify that the signature is correct and and it can then let the user in so what does Azure AD connect to uh, connect do when you configure this so first it creates a farm if if there isn't farm yet uh, ADFS farm then it creates two certificates one for token uh, encryption and one for token signing and the token signing is the one that is used here and, and, and the ones that we are interested in okay then it also configures as already so that it converts uh, the domain the selected domain we want to want to use here to federate it and while it does that it also tells that this is the uh, the issuer or the URL for this ADFS service so that the uh, Azure AD can redirect the user to the correct uh, ADFS and it also tells that this is the certificate I'm using when I'm signing these these security tokens and we actually have two different authentication flows so the first one is the what is typically used here which is service provider initiated where you go first to Azure AD and it recognizes that okay you are a federated user it, it, it then redirects you to identity provider to our ADFS server and the ADFS server creates the security token sends it back to the user and then you can user can take that and access the, the service we also have the uh, identity provider initiated flow where you go directly to identity provider and say I want to use this service give me your security token well it, it creates the token and then you can go to the service with that token so it kind of uh, makes those first two steps unnecessarily and this is also what we are using here the the identity provider initiated logon so that we can we can create that beforehand and then then just use the service but what is in inside that service token well there's a thing called saml assertion so saml is an industry standard it's a xml based based document about the user and it has these kind of information so there's the audience so so it creates these service tokens for certain audience which in this case is Azure AD there's the issuer aka what is the ADFS server who created this SAML assertion then there are some attributes about the user UPN immutable ID and that kind of information there can be group information for instance and then there's a signature so how the authentication is performed when Azure AD receives this, this um, security token it checks that issuer matches the verity domain it checks that the public key within that uh, security token matches the verity domain it checks that the signature is valid and it also checks that the, the that there is a user that matches the immutable ID ID value and um, and that's pretty much it so how can we exploit this well at least one federated domain has to be has to be registered in Azure AD for that tenant so just one it doesn't have to well with one federated domain you can log in as any user of the tenant as long as you know the immutable id of the, of the target user so it doesn't the user doesn't have to be even synchronized as long as it has some text text in immutable id field and you also need private key so that you can sign those those tokens and then you need to issue your url that is registered to that that, that domain so this information you need so you need private key or, cert or certificate with private key you need that issuer information then you need immutable id and with those you can do do those you can create those security tokens and you can log in as any user you want so 
One more time again. Yes, so this is our last demo for today. So we're going to switch to controls over here. And I'm just going to clear the screen here. And I already actually have the certificate here, even so I can just delete that. So now we are locked in a computer which has ADF services configured. So as we can see in relaying party trusts, we have, a, oh, sorry about that. Let's try again. So we have a Microsoft Office 365 identity platform worldwide. So this just indicates that you, you have made already this federation trust between, between your AD and, and Azure AD. So now what we want to do is to export that certificate, which are used here. Let me see if I can quickly go here. So this is the token decryption, sorry, not that one, token signing certificate. This one here, which we want to want to export, but uh, because this is created automatically, it is not stored in the certificate store of this computer, but it's stored in the configuration database and it's encrypted with, uh, with a certain key. And the information about that key is stored actually to Active Directory of this uh, domain. And in order to be able to export that, you need to extract that key and then decrypt that certificate. And, and that's what we have done here. So we can say export AAD internal token sign in certificate, hit enter. And now, as we can see, it appears here. And if we, let's say, say open, we can see that the certificate is the same one. ADF is signing dash STS control to office 365 labs that online. And now we have that. What else we need? We need issuer information. And and this is how can we how we can actually get that. So I can say get ADFS properties and select identifier like this. So this is the same as I'm here already saved to that variable. And then we need immutable ID. Now this terrible line line of puzzle pow code, code here is that it it transforms this object GUID which, uh, which I have entered here into a base 64 encoded format which which is used here. So now we need to have a GUID of some, some user we want to log in as. So I'm going to say get ad user filter star and select user principal name and object GUID. And we have three guys here. So let's say we want to log in as, an, as Alex. So we are going to copy that one. And I'm going to replace this one like this. And now when I run this line, the the immutable ID is now saved to that variable. So if I just show it to you like this, so this is how how it looks like in, in, in Azure AD, the immutable ID field for this user. Okay, so now we have all information we need, so I think we are ready to log in as that user. So we have a comment here called open AAD in Office 365 portal. I can say that immutable ID equals a variable. Okay, just take the camera away again. And then the issuer information equals the issuer variable. And then Let's say pfx file name is ADF signing certificate 
Um, this one doesn't have any password, so I don't need to provide that one, but that should do it. And now when I hit enter, it actually creates a HTML file which contains that SAML token and it, it and there's a single button that when you press that it, it will send that to Azure AD and you, you can log in as this user. Now who was this? It was Alex, yes. So now I just click log in to Office 365 button and it says that okay. You are, you are very welcome here. And as you can see, you, you could do that. Yes, so that's how, how that works. So if you can have access to that certificate, you can take it with you. You don't need to access to the organization anymore. And the only thing you need to know, only thing you need to do is to have that uh, certificate and the immutable ID and you can log in as any user. Yes, so that was the demo and then how to detect this? Well, again the same puzzle module logging, that's one option, but uh, I would I would I would try to monitor uh, logs instead of that, so you should monitor your audit log of Azure AD and look for any events that has something to do with domains. So first of all, you don't add domains very often. And if there's any any activity regarding to federation settings, that's very alarming, especially if there are things like this, like any STS, because that's the issue your uh, AAD internals is currently using. And you you shouldn't do you shouldn't see anything like that in production environment. Also, uh, uh, with the with the SAML token, uh, you can add a certain certain let's say claim there, which can be used to bypass uh, MFA. It's meant for situation where uh, well, if you have ADFS, you can you can already have a MFA performed in in your ADFS server, and that way there's a mechanism mechanism that ADFS can add a claim to that SAML token and tell to cloud that hey, I've already done MFA, so on, so I don't want to do that anymore. So that you can actually use to bypass MFA. So you just add that claim, and and as already doesn't ask you MFA for, for another time. So, how you can uh, mitigate these, these three things? Well, if you, if you uh, notice that, okay, your organization is breached, so you need to do at least these things, so you need to rotate ADFS token signing certificate twice, you need to rotate K, KRB TGT account password twice, and also Azure AD SSO ACC computer account password wise. So do that immediately if you if you see something like this. So that's how to mitigate. So how to prevent? Well, that's not easy thing, but uh, well, basically every every Microsoft best practice says that you should treat all these components as a tier zero servers. So tier zero is those servers and services that you need to protect in any cost. Cost. So for instance, Active Directory or domain controllers, those are you need to protect them. But you need to protect Azure AD Connect as a similar way, and also any server with PTA agents or ADFS servers. You should treat all those as tier zero. So that kind of summarizes our. Our, our presentation for today. So I showed you three different ways that if you can compromise organization on-prem environment, you can use uh, or how you can you can leverage that and gain access to organization cloud environment also. You should remember that with PTA and seamless single sign-on, uh, 
you still may may limit access there via via MFA. So you can bypass MFA using these techniques. Uh, but with with the SAML spoofed SAML token, you can bypass MFA. But you cannot bypass uh, the conditional access rules. So with conditional access, you can still limit limit the exploitability of these these things. So just build your environment safely, and 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 that should block most of the most of the scenarios here, which I which I presented for you today. Yes. So with that, thank you for watching and keep it safe.